Uh, we will continue our discussion and we will understand about the data extensions. So we have already understood the data extensions in email studio. So we can see the data extension from here or from the email studio. Uh, we will understand a couple of differences when we access the data extension from content builder versus uh, from email studio. So I think a couple of things we already know that uh, if there are more than 200 requests that we want to access from a data extension, that we cannot view from the email studio and we have to come to contact builder if you want to access a large number of reports right more than 200 reports uh let's go to our folder and then let's see a couple of more differences so let's pick this to extension um so all these options are almost same I mean, used for sending you for testing and have all the fields over here. We can uh, add any other field or attribute that we want to add and things like that. Okay. Um, a data retention policy, once the data extension is created, you cannot add a data retention policy in Emily Studio, but you can do that uh, via contact filter. So here we get this option to make the changes in the data retention policy uh, via contact filter. Now, when we come to record, uh, you can see we can filter the reports based on the customer ID. Because we have made the customer ID as a primary key, we are now able to filter the reports with the help of customer ID. So whatever the fields that you have made as a primary key, these options or these fields will, uh, will be there for us to make a filter. Um, otherwise, if you will not make any primary key, we will not get any option to filter the reports. So this is the late filtering the records is not uh, applicable in email studio. We can only do it via contact filter. So that is one thing. Apart from that, why we use generally for the con why we generally use contact builder uh, for the data extension? There are two main reasons. One is that if you want to access more than two hundred records, and another reason is that uh, we can perform the cloud operation over here. So if you want to create any new record in the rate extension, we can do that. We can just add a record over here and it will be done. But this option, you don't get it in a email studio. Apart from that, if you want to make a change in any other record, we can edit the record. We can clear a single record. But in case of email studio, uh, we only have this option to clear all the records. We cannot clear or we cannot delete a single record. Or we cannot edit a report. So these are the few differences uh, that is there in the data extension if we access it from the email studio versus content builder. But the concept remains same. Uh, we have different types of data extensions. We have um, um, uh, the different properties of data extension. So we, we can click on the page button over here and we get the same right. So it says that um, how do you want to create the data extension and the different attributes in them. Okay, so import activity um, we'll talk about in detail when we come to automation studio. Uh, then I'll show you the entire import information. So basically, import is used to import the data from the FTP server. So we'll understand this in detail when it, when we come to automation studio. Now let's talk about the context configuration and here we will talk about the contact deletion. So before understanding the contact deletion, let's understand a few um, basic questions that uh, why do we want to delete a contact and all. So we have all this data stored in our marketing cloud. Now what would be the scenarios where we might want to delete the contact? So let's say we have all these contacts and uh, now they have opted out or maybe we are not sending them the emails or any kind of communication and they are just you know taking up the space and whatever the contact that we have in our account uh, they are believable i mean uh, they are chargeable so marketing cloud charges the company based on number of accounts that they are storing in the um in the account so let's say the addition that we purchase uh, we get this um, 
uh, like 45k contacts you know, that we can store maximum but if we exceed that limit then what will happen for each and every contact we have to pay additional so if we have additional contacts and we are not using them anymore what, what do we want to do uh, we will just delete them all right uh, second scenario what could happen is that um, if there is a customer and the customer say that i don't want you to store any of my information in the system and um, as the gdpr you know laws we have to uh, comply with the regulations so we have to delete every information that we have stored in that marketing cloud account for that particular customer so there could be two scenarios one is that if you want to delete it from our own you know push and um, we want to delete it like because of we don't want these contacts anymore or this request might come from the customer side and we want to delete the contact but um, it could be any scenario it could be any reason uh, but we have to delete a contact right now let's understand that how do we delete a contact i mean deleting a contact is not a very lengthy process but uh, in the back end it you know it is um, processed in many in different phases so we'll understand that when we delete a contact what happens in the back end and uh, what are the different stages of the content goes through uh, before the permanent deletion so we'll go to the all contacts before that uh, let me go to contacts analytics okay so this is a, a tab content analytics where we can see uh, the, how many requests that we have made for the content deletion so it says contact delete request so in a week or in a day or in a month so how many requests that we have released so right now it is not showing anything because we have not made any request uh what we will do now we'll go to email and we will delete a contact uh -oh. So we will delete this contact. Uh, we will check this checkbox and we will click on this pin icon and this drop down. Um, here what we can do, we can delete the selected contacts if we want to delete manually. Otherwise we have two more options. We can delete the contacts from our list or from the date extension. So here we have to select the list and in the another option we have to select the date extension and then we can delete all the contacts or all the reports from that particular list or the date extension. For now, um, just to make this process simpler, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to delete this particular contact. So I'll click on this delete this particular contacts and it will be deleted when I click on this. So whenever we say that, okay, we want to delete a contact, what happens in the back, back end is that it goes through different, different stages. The first stage is that deletion request. So we are initiating the request, we are initiating the process of the deletion. Now, once the contact is initiated for the deletion, it goes into the suppression period. Now, what is the suppression period? Um, it is a time period in which a contact stays in the system, but it is not available on the UI, and we cannot see or we cannot access that contact from any of the application. Um, like it is showing us over here that um, uh, we the, like uh, once we initiate the request, it will go into the suppressed uh, period and it will be called as a suppressed contact. In a suppressed context, uh, they are saying that do not appear in journey builder, do not appear in contact builder, and um, email studio, mobile thread, mobile push. Right? So these are different applications from where the content will be suppressed and it won't it, it won't appear uh, anywhere. And we cannot access it. We cannot send the communication to that contact. Uh, as it is in the suppressed period. Now, once the suppression period is over, what happens is that the like marketing will finally delete that contact and it is a final permanent deletion and we cannot undo this process. Um, okay, so let's delete the contact. So now what I'll do, I'll again search for this contact. Okay, so it is not available over here. 
and uh, so okay one more thing so if you want to delete a contact we have to enable this feature called contact delete if you will like this feature is turned on right now and if you will turn off this feature what will happen we will not get that uh, bin option we will not get that option to delete the contact and here you can see this um, small link that is called manage settings so when we click on this what we can do we can see uh, this the range right so this is for the setting up the suppression period so it can range from 0 to 30 days so if we we'll set it to 0 what will happen uh, right now it is set to 0 only so it means that it will be deleted instantly it will not go into the suppression period and it will file like go just to the final deletion so let's go to context analytics Okay, let's wait for a few minutes and then we will again see whether we have got the request over here or not. Uh, let's talk some of the best practices when we delete a contact. Uh, so whenever we delete a contact, we saw that um, it will be suppressed from all the different applications that we have in Marketing Cloud account. Uh, not just it will be suppressed, but it will also be deleted. Because a contact we talked about our contact is a person, right? And it might be related to the email studio subscriber, mobile studio subscriber, and it might be a part of a data extension as well, right? But whenever a customer raises the request that I don't want any information to be stored in this account, uh, which means that uh, wherever we have stored the information, it could be a data extension or list or anywhere, uh, it has to be deleted, right? Uh, we just don't want to delete from the content builder, but um, wherever we have stored this information, we want to delete it. Um, now, when once we initiate the request for the deletion, what happens? It will not only delete from the contact builder, but from all subscribers list, list, sendable data extension, mobile client, mobile push. It will delete the record from everywhere. Right now, how do we, how do marketing cloud identify that okay, it is the same record, and I need to delete it? because of the um contact key so in all subscribers list subscriber key value will be same as the contact key right in list also we have subscriber key in sendable data extension we also have a subscriber key uh, mobile connect mobile push we have a contact key right so with the help of the contact key value it will go to that particular table like all subscribers list or sendable data extension so it will go to that particular table find that record with the end of the contact key and then it will delete it but this process does not apply to the non sendable data extensions <clears throat> why because it makes sense that in non sendable data extension we do not have a uh, subscriber key now when we don't have a subscriber key how marketing code is going to identify that it is the same record same record for which i want to delete the uh, contact so for non sendable data extensions we have to do it manually that we have to go to the data extension, find the record uh, that is it the same record or not, and then we have to delete it. But from all these places, it will be deleted by the system. Now, once we delete a contact, it is a final process, and it cannot uh, like we cannot undo this process. We cannot restore the deleted contacts. Once it is deleted, it is deleted. Now, when we delete a contact, we also delete the, all the preferences which are associated with that particular contact. So, let's say um, he wants to receive the um, text based emails and not the HTML based emails. Um, he has opted in for in these, these particular categories in publication based. So, whatever the preferences that we have stored for the particular contact, uh, they, that will also be deleted, right? And uh, now, if I, if the same content, if you reintroduce the same content, then we have to consider that content as a fresh content, and then we have to, you know, take all the content from that um, customer account. We cannot say that okay, we already have your permission. We already have the permission from this content or your preferences, and we will send the email accordingly. So the new content will be treated as a new content only, and we have to uh, take the consent and the permission again. Um, 
so this is what we just saw that if you want to delete a contact we have to enable this feature contact delete uh, which is available in the context configuration otherwise we won't be able to delete the contact so whenever we delete a contact from a list or data extension i mean it's the best practice that we export the list or data extension in a file otherwise what will happen that if there is an error in the process uh, we won't get to know that okay what all contacts or what all reports are deleted and what all are pending right so uh, like if you have this file you know as a backup then at least we know okay, okay if there's anything uh, wrong goes then we have a backup and we can just import the file and initiate the delete process again so for the synchronous data sources i mean uh, we just talked about the synchronous data extensions right and how we can pull the data from the other salesforce systems into marketing cloud so if the data is coming from any other salesforce system into marketing cloud uh, we have to delete it from the source right so we don't have the delete, delete permission in the synchronized data extensions so what we need to do we need to go to sales cloud service cloud and then we have to delete the uh, data from there we cannot delete it in the marketing so let's just see okay so let's do one thing we will change the suppression period to one day now we will delete up again a contact <clears throat> It might take some time of uh, up here over here. So let's talk about the content analytics. Uh, so basically it has you know four different sections, total complete processing and invalid. So whatever the request that we have made, it will first go into the processing state. And after the processing, either it will be a complete or invalid and uh, the total tab shows all the total requests like that we have made so far uh, 